couple of months ago, I did a video on how to make your own musical sequencer that sequenced all those electrical buzzes into an eight note long musical melody. And I was pretty amazed that people went and built them and they work. That's it up there. Since that sequencer worked, why don't we make one that triggers drum patterns? So to start with, what is a drum trigger sequencer? It's basically something that you tell what to do and it tells the drums or whatever when to play. All drum machines have a drum sequencer. For example, a sequencer in this rather lovely Lindrum from 1982. You basically tell it what to do. And it plays it straight back at you. Or this rather lovely synth bike from 2017. The drum sequencer in this basically has rows of 16 switches, so you can tell the drums when to play. Like this. Sadly, the Furby organ doesn't have a drum sequencer. For Synthbike 2.0, I designed a drum sequencer that had one big button. I designed it like this because the front panel was already going to be completely full. It needed to be small, but you still needed control over all the drums. So let's take this design and put it into its own box. Right, so what are we gonna need for this thingamajiggy? Well, one Arduino Nano programmable chip and a socket to put in, of course. Some strip board to solder all the pieces to, as well as a big light up our cape button. Two potentiometer twisty things, as well as one twisty rotary switch. Five push buttons, as well as seven mini jack sockets. One power to power thing to power the whole shebang, as well as six light mang diodes and and bajiggies to put them in. A couple of mountain rods. What about a 7, 8, LO5 power regulator? As well as a bunch of resistors to wire it all together. Oh, and loads of pretty colored wires. You need that stuff. And remember the box. Always remember the box. And then look at it all together. We're going to start putting this together to this picture, which is included on my website. So go and check it out if you want to make it. First things first is we need to work out where we're going to put all of the bits. So we kind of just put it around, have a play around, put some dots, and then start drilling. Drill those pilot holes, swap it out for a bigger drill bit and get those bigger holes drilled. Look at that, oh, it's getting angry. So things are starting to happen. And my workmanship, and then get some deodorant out and spray it on there to get the Sharpie off. And now you've got to get all the components, try not to scratch the panel, and just bolt them in place just like so, looking very lovely. And now you've got a doodly the artist here, you just need to know exactly what the buttons mean. Now it's time to get out of that strip board. This is where the electricity magic happens. Cut some holes so the Arduino doesn't short itself by the back and it's solder down the socket. Look at that, look at all that smoke. And now get the power regulator soldered down and then put these red and black wires on there. See, they're on the picture right there. Now pop that Arduino in there, lovely. Can you believe it's all done there? Now you gotta get these 1K resistors and put them on the jacks in between the jack and the LED positive legs, just like so. Lovely, look at all that smoke. Hopefully it doesn't get high on lead. Oh, look at that picture. Now he's soldered all of the negative legs of the LEDs together. And this is where he puts the 10K resistors onto all of the switches. These are pull down resistors to stop the switches going crazy. And these go straight to ground, so he's connecting a bare wire over to to all of them to make sure they're all connected and filling them in with some black wires so all of the grounds are connected together and then we get these little 2k resistors and pop them on there like so and then you get the red wire which is the 5 volt wire and you solder that in place like the picture says chuck aside now it's time to go back to the circuit board and just get all those blue pink and green wires soldered onto the designated parts check the picture again check it check it check it all the time okay great that looks lovely i think we're nearly there and then fly away to oh to, to just go back to where you were now we just got to solder all the wires in place to where they're supposed to be on the picture it really is that easy it's painting by numbers and then we just make it look a bit of need and then you just pop it on the back there and what is that it oh Oh, it's done. Oh, no, wait. You just got to put the power socket into the big thing so you can plug it in and then upload the Arduino code using a computer, whatever that is. And now, apparently, it's it's done. Well, that was pretty quick. That looks pretty easy. Whew. So there it is, a six-channel trigger sequencer.
The question is, what can we plug this into? We could trigger anything with it. But for this video, I've made another box to complement this box. Yep. This box has a spark fun wav trigger inside it, which basically holds a lot of audio samples. Put this and this together, and you've basically got the two main pieces of a drum machine. There's a video of me building this wav trigger box on my Patreon, so if you want to see that, go and check it out over there. So now I've got them plugged up to the power, and I also have with me this Arturia Mini Brute 2S. So the first thing to do is sync this and this together so they're playing in the same time. So let's plug sync out. Over into clock in. Woo. This box doesn't make sound on its own. It only tells sound to sound. So we've got to plug it into some sound. So now it's all hooked up. I just need to plug this and this into the speakers. Woo. So it's got a little flashy light in here. Woo. So this is how you select the different channels. This is how long the sequence is from one straight over to 32 steps. This is a shuffle, it kind of shuffles up and mangles up that channel that you're on. You can reset it, you can clear that channel you're on, you can delete that one step. You can change banks, it's got two banks per channel, so you can have two different sequences on that channel. And there's a fill, so you can play a fill with it all. That's the kick. And if I want to fill the kick... You press the fill. So that's the big button. If you go cheap on most of the parts, like what it's in and the knobs you're using, you could probably build this for about 20 quid. There's information, the Arduino code, and what you need to build this all on my website, so go and check it out. I'm going to give this specific big button away on my Patreon, so if you want this specific one, go and check on my Patreon for information on that. And yeah, till next week, I'm Lookman No Computer, this is Big Button, don't forget to subscribe, yeah! <laughs>